Hello, and welcome to the section of the Differential Equations Tutor. Uh, in this section, we're going to cover what we call solutions of linear, homogeneous, uh, ordinary differential equations that have constant coefficients, but in this case, they're going to have complex roots. So you have to, to see the big picture here, folks. What we did in the last couple of sections is we learned how to solve a very important class of differential equations in the last few sections, and they had constant coefficients and they were homogeneous. Homogeneous means the, the right-hand side of the equal sign is zero. So there's no forcing function. There's no active input. It's just a system. We sort of set it in motion and we watch it. But there's no active pushing on it or input into it or anything like that. That's what homogeneous means. In the last few sections, all of those equations had constant coefficients. And we learned that basically we write it in operator notation we uh, basically get a polynomial out of that. We find the roots of the polynomial, and from that we construct the solution directly. There's a few tricks along the way, but that's basically what it is. But in all of those cases, the roots that we got in the last few sections, they were all real numbers. They were all, you know, 3, or r equals 2, or r equals negative 10, or something. They were numbers real numbers. In other words, no complex numbers anywhere. And we can write the solution directly. And I told you that if you ever do that and you get an imaginary number or a complex number which has a real and an imaginary part, then the solution process becomes a little bit more interesting. And that's what we're going to do here. So it's the exact same class of equation. Constant coefficients, homogeneous, exactly as before. It's just this case when we do our polynomial and we get the, the roots that fall out of it, the uh, roots are going to be um, complex, which means it can have a real and imaginary part to it. So let's do just a little bit of review because I think it'll help pull this in. So what we do, uh, recalling from the last section when we have these kinds of equations, we, we find the roots, right? We've been doing this a lot. So we're, if we were going to find the roots to that polynomial that we get when we, I'm not going to write an example here because we've done so many recently, but you basically write the equation down in operator notation and you get a polynomial out then you might find, for instance, that r is equal to 2, and you might find that r is equal to 3, let's say. So we had two, uh, two roots that fall out of that, let's say. So if the, And these are real numbers. There's no imaginary number anywhere. This is what we did last time. So what we found in these cases is that the solution was constant 1 times e to the 2t plus constant 2 times e to the 3t. You know, 2 goes from here and 3 goes to there, and that was basically it. You construct the solution directly. We have constants here because uh, we don't have any initial conditions specified. If we, f if we find initial conditions, or if we are given initial conditions, then we can lock these constants down and, and nail the solution down any, you know, even more. All right, now we also learned that if we have, if we have multiplicity, Right? So in other words, maybe these roots occur more than one time, then it changes things just a little bit. So let's say we had r is equal to negative 2 with multiplicity of 2, which just means, and I'm not going to write the differential equation down that, but to, to get this, but I think we've done enough where you'll see that you might have a double root here, r is equal to negative 2, r is equal to negative 2, it happens two times. And in those cases, the way we constructed the solution, anytime we have a multiplicity, we said we had uh, something like constant 1 e to the negative 2t plus c2 times t times e to the negative 2t. So the, the negative 2 still comes in the same place, it's just that when there's a multiplicity you add a t in here. And if you had a multiplicity of 3, you'd have another term with c3 